blessings. Some of the stories that will be mentioned this morning, a 16-year-old student, RAPE, while her boyfriend watched, 19-year-old Chavel Chambers of a Portmore address has been M-I-S-S-I-N-G, a major aunt is now on for a violence producer that is linked to the car of missing Clarendon teacher, Miss Natalie Dawkins. St. James man charged for attacking his ex-girlfriend with a weapon. Also coming up, the leftovers of a woman found in a shallow send-off has been identified as that of a Kingston woman that has been reported MIA. That and more, but most importantly, remember that in order for you to get these news items, you need to join the Jamaican Display family. Yeah, gee. So if you're new to the channel, if it is your first time over here, please I'm asking you to subscribe. Plus, click the notification bell and while doing so, select option all so that way you'll be first in line to be notified about each and every activities on our channel. And also remember to give this video a like for YouTube algorithm blessings and more beatitude good morning stay safe starting off from kingston two men have been arrested and charged in connection with the illegal trespassing on a 16 year old student in february and the 16-year-old minor later reported the matter to her relatives in April. Reports are that the student had gone to visit her boyfriend, who is said to be a 19-year-old young man. Upon reaching his apartment, while she was in his room, another man visited the premises. The 26-year-old man then entered the room after the boyfriend told him to do so, and both the man and the boyfriend subdued the student and the 26-year-old man trespassed illegally on her property. In other words, she was S-E-X-U-A-L-L-Y-A-S-S-A-U-L-T-E-D while the boyfriend watched, he stood and admired the view of the happenings. So both of them have been charged with R-A-P-E and aiding and abetting to R-A-P-E. Two more young violence producers are up for some custodial time and it is rightfully deserved because in cases like these the victim's life will never be the same from that experience she underwent by these monsters it will not affect the way she look at men it will impact her relationship status moving forward and most importantly but sad it will now have a mental perpetual impact on her entire life as a young woman and i'm happy that she's still alive after all the trauma because due to what is happening now in our society they could have done the worst to her and I'm thankful they didn't. Her life was spared while we eagerly await their punishment. Another young lady from Portmore has been MIA, missing in action. 19 year old Chavel Chambers of Christian Gardens, Gregory Park St. Catherine, has been missing since Saturday, April 3. She is of brown complexion, slim built and about 170 centimeters tall, 5 feet 7 inches. Reports from the Caymanas police are that about 7 a.m. Chaville left home on an errand and has not been seen since. When last seen, she was wearing a black t-shirt, green ripped denim pants and a pair of brown slippers. All efforts to contact her phone have proven futile. So anyone knowing the whereabouts of Shavil Chambers is being asked to contact the Caymanas police at 876-988-1719. Police 119 emergency number, ordinary police station in her vicinity. And we can only hope and pray that this will not result in an ex Canice Jackson or Jasmine Dean situation where she will found and pronounce are missing without a trace. And um, this is a fresh release, so I'll keep her based on this as well while the case progresses. Now, as we move over to the parish of St. Elizabeth, it is said that two men from Trelawney went on a mission to steal some cow in St. Elizabeth and they were unsuccessful because they got caught. These are the only pictures I have of them at the moment, so I'll keep you abreast on that if it should escalate any further. 39-year-old Kirk Barrett of Ellerslie Pen, Spanish Town in St. Catherine, have been MI 
SSING since Saturday, March 27. He is of dark complexion, slim built, and about 178 centimeters, 5 feet 10 inches tall. Reports from the Spanish Town Police are that about 2 p.m., Bart was last seen along St. John's Road in the parish. When last seen, he was wearing a black jacket suit and a purple shirt. He has not been heard from since. So anyone knowing the whereabouts of Kirk Barrett, he's been asked to contact the Spanish Town Police at 876-984-2305. Police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station in your vicinity. A St. James man charged for attacking his ex-girlfriend with a gun. St. James sales representative, 23-year-old Gavin Shaw, otherwise called JR, is to appear in court in connection with an attack on the mother of his child when he approached her with a gun in an aggravated manner. Shaw, who is from retirement Montego Bay, has been charged with ASSAULT at common law with the use of a firearm. The police report that on the afternoon of Thursday, March 18, the woman, who they say had recently ended an abusive relationship with the accused, visited Shaw's mother's home to drop off their child. It is further reported that while there, she was confronted by Shaw, who reported the accuser of being promiscuous and refusing to return his calls. So he's all up in his feelings, claiming that his baby mother is ignoring him. According to the police, Shaw then ran to the rear of the premises and returned with a handgun which he reportedly pointed at the complainant repeatedly and threatening to K-I-L-L her. The police say that his relatives intervened, allowing the woman to escape unharmed. The matter was reported to the police. Shaw was arrested on Friday, April 2 and charged following an interview. His court date is being finalized. So what I realize is that the new trend or the new way some men can think to resolve an issue with their partners or to get back at a woman is to have her subtracted because these men doesn't seem to want to let go when a woman call it quit. They rather to be sent to jail while the females are on their way to the burial ground whether it is a family plot or the cemetery. cemetery. So again, ladies be careful because these new breed of species don't forgive and they certainly won't forget what you did to them worse, what they have done for you, etc. Please try to be independent as possible because that is a major problem. When you're dependent, when you're trying to depend on a man, he always try to take advantage of the situation and it can um, also escalate and lead to a B-U-S-E. Now to Miss Natalie Dawkins' story. As we speak, a joint police military operation is now underway in Brownsville, St. Catherine, as the security forces launch a search for a man who escaped their dragnet yesterday in takeoff. The man is believed to be an accomplice of the unidentified man who discharged rounds at members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force and was taken out in an exchange of rounds in Belfield District near Bellas Gate, St. Catherine, about 1.30 a.m. afternoon. Sorry, about 1.30 p.m. yesterday afternoon. And the car of the missing Clarendon teacher, Miss Natalie Dawkins, was also recovered. Both men were being accosted after they were seen with the navy blue Toyota Wish motor car belonging to Miss Natalie Dawkins. According to the police, they were seeking to sell the car while the whereabouts of the missing educator is still unknown. However, the police indicated that they have been following several leads into the disappearance of Miss Natalie Dawkins and are continuing a series of operations in search of her. And again, disappearing in Jamaica for over um, 48 hours can lead to unwelcome pronouncements that no family would want to experience so let us keep our fingers crossed and have the fate of job here's the video so please be attentive then leave a comment and make your opinion counts down in the comment section blessings the car of missing clarendon teacher natalie dawkins was recovered by the saint catherine north police after a deadly confrontation with at least two men in Brownsall, saint catherine earlier saturday according to the saint catherine north police upon approaching the area where the car was found they were shot at by at least one man who was later killed when the police returned fire a firearm was seized the police say they are still processing the scene 
The police note, however, that the search for the missing teacher continues. Meanwhile, teachers and parents from the Four Paths Primary School were out on Saturday issuing flyers to motorists and pedestrians in Clarendon as they begged for the public's assistance in locating their colleague. We spoke to the principal of Four Paths Primary School, Rosemary Logan. My teachers are sad, of course, about everything that is happening. Um, but this morning, a number of them were out. As a matter of fact, I think all the teachers were out this morning. And even some of our parents were here this morning in solidarity, saying that we need Miss Dawkins to come home. Not just to come home, but come home alive. They were gathered along the ending of the east-west leg of Highway 2000, where Dawkins' bag was reportedly found days earlier. An envelope was found with a name written on it. Family members later confirmed that it's the name of Natalie's brother. A cell phone was also found. The Clarendon police say investigations are ongoing. Principal Logan says she met with Dawkins the morning of the day she went missing. We were planning a meeting with all the school improvement plan committee. I would have said to Miss Dawkins, remember our meeting tomorrow. She said, yes, miss, I am going to be there. Even to the point where she was supposed to come in at 8 o'clock the Wednesday morning and prepare the sandwiches for the team. So you can imagine when we did not see her because she's really a punctual person. You know, how would have felt about it? She says the school community is devastated by Dawkins' disappearance. It's a very traumatic time for us. It's a very frustrating time. It's a very dis depressing time for us right now. Very depressing. Christine Forbes, CVM Live. No, the leftovers of a female was found yesterday afternoon in a shallow send-off otherwise a shallow G-R-A-V-E. I also have a video pertaining to this incident. I'm going to share it shortly. The B-O-D-Y was later identified as missing Kingston woman. 50-year-old Millicent Robinson of Benbow Street in Kingston, who had been reported MIA, was found in a shallow send-off at her home. Reports are that about 12.06 p.m., lawmen, during their investigations into Robinson's disappearance, visited her home, and during a search of the yard, the police discovered what appeared or what proved to be a shallow send-off. Her leftovers was wrapped in plastic. It was exhumed and removed to the freezer, pending a post-mortem examination, which is expected to be done in due time, shortly. The police are now investigating the circumstances surrounding her dismissal. The public assistance is needed and will not be ruled out, so the police are appealing to anyone with information that can assist with this investigation to come forward or contact the Denham Town Police at 876-922-6441, Crime Stop 311, or Police 119 Emergency Number, or even the nearest police station in your vicinity. Now there is a video, so please be attentive to this as well. Then leave a comment and make your opinion counts down in the comment section. Blessings. But most importantly, like I always say, in order to get these news items, you need to join the Jamaican Display family. So if you're new to the channel, if it is your first time over here, please I'm asking you to subscribe. I would appreciate that. Then hit the notification bell and while doing so select option all so that way you'll be first in line to be notified about each and every activities on our channel on this channel and also remember to give this video a like continue like up the video like always for youtube algorithm blessings and more beatitude happy monday stay safe blessings the community of Jonestown in Trenchdown is the latest to be rocked by a killing of a woman. 50-year-old Millicent Robinson was reportedly found buried in her yard on Bembo Street on Saturday. According to the police, she was last seen on Sunday, March 28 at home and was reported missing by her spouse on March 30. It's very upsetting and now it's right at our gateway, at our doorway. It's hurting and she's a, she's a very gentle person. Very loving, uh, very anything you can make Millicent go do. And it hurt because we are walk and look fair for what you watch. She was right in her yard, it hurt everybody. And it's cruelty, it's wickedness. We don't see why somebody would want to try to do anything like this to her, isn't it? Because 
It's a nice lady. I mean, over here she and nobody in a no re really and thing. You see me? Every day I wake up, woman are missing, children are missing, everything. See that which our doorstep now. In our own our local community, they are local missing. But a lady, she not trouble people, you know. She not trouble people, and the death she get it awful, it's terrible. It hurt me hard, man. CVM Live understand that it was the police who found the body acting upon the missing person report. A search of the yard uncovered a pickaxe with bloodstains. And we discovered what is believed to be a shallow grave and the body of a unidentified female was removed from a shallow grave. So we are thinking more or less that this may have been the person, but we will do some more investigation. The partner of the woman who reported her missing says he was away when he heard the news. CVM Live will continue to monitor this story. Jamila Maitland for CVM Live.